for four five years and then he actually obtained his MSTAD and PhD both from ISI and then joined Oxford in the biomedical engineering and uh, cardiovascular uh, sciences uh, division I think and he has uh, profound knowledge in uh, you know medical imaging uh, uh, information extraction from different kind of biomedical image and he will mostly dwell in uh, the different techniques, uh, I mean, different applications of medical imaging, image processing, and then what are the related topics here? He's currently working at Oxford. So I think you will enjoy uh, his talk. And anytime you can interrupt him, he already told me that uh, let us uh, fix, uh, let us have this as a class type uh, talk. So you can anytime interrupt him uh, to ask any questions, right? Thank you. Am I audible? Good, right? Okay. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, I'm Ogurup, and today what I'm going to present is actually what I did during my PhD thesis in ISI. So, I mean, you don't have to bother about the title because I'm actually start with a very, just a, first I give you some domain knowledge. I mean, what is the problem? What is pattern recognition? And from there, I just started into some unsupervised learning, which is clustering. And Green Jolchen. Cut, 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 cut. Hello. 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 So you guys are not familiar with uh, what is pattern recognition, right? So, okay. So I mean, what is pattern recognition? So as the name suggests, you want to recognize some patterns. That's it. As simple as that. Okay. Now you have several data set, and you can have different kind of data. So, or maybe okay. Let me start with uh, not pattern recognition, but learning. Okay. Now, what do you want to do? We want to learn something. That's it. So. When you are young, uh, you see a clock. Okay, you don't know how to read a clock. I mean, I'm not talking about a digital clock, but the analog clock. So you don't know what is the small line, small 
needle and the long needle works. So your parents taught you that how it works. So this means like this means uh, eight o'clock. This is nine o'clock. These are some of the patterns. That's it. So you from your childhood you had learned to recognize those patterns, and from there now when you see a watch and whatever you see, and it can have any kind of needle like this or any kind of needle when you see or not even that just see something here something here you instantly learns that okay this is the time right so your mind is trained on some of the distribution of the patterns or the needles and from that now when you see at any different kind of clock you can you have understand what is the time right now human mind works that way and this is what we call as supervised learning so your mind is trained on something and from there when you see a new data you will project your knowledge onto that and you try to understand or you to try to learn something and this is what we call a supervised learning uh, now a machine has no knowledge like a baby so when we have to tr learn a machine uh, want to teach machine something we will give him some data and we will tell him okay this is your data set and then we ask him that what is uh, what does this means like you give a machine of images of cats and dogs and you tell them okay this is cat this is dog and now when you give you give a machine a new image of a cat or a dog and you check the whether the machine is able to learn that or the identify it as a da dog or a cat okay now this is what we call supervised learning but today i'm not going to talk about that my subject is unsupervised learning now what is unsupervised learning unsupervised learning means you don't have any knowledge and you try to get or gather some data from the or some information from the data without having any prior knowledge now that is unsupervised learning that means you have to identify a cat without knowing what cat is now that's obviously a very difficult problem because if you don't know like you have never seen a yak but you have to identify yak so now that's a problem but what you can do if i give you a images of yak and like a komodo dragon now from there you at least can identify which ones which set is of the yak and which set is the komodo dragon or you can distinguish between these two sets so you don't have to identify okay this is the object or this is the animal but you have to distinguish between these two sets now this is what we call unsupervised learning and or this approach or the partitioning data into different groups we call as clustering so what is clustering clustering formally is known as the process of partitioning an image space uh, or the process of identifying natural groups in a data set now this natural word is very key important so you are have you have to identify or the partition a cell like see this is the image this is a traditional data we call it a iris data set okay uh, usually there is a four features into the data but i have just selected two most relevant features now this is your data set and your objective is to identify the natural groups okay now from if you see this data just don't look at the colors you see that there is at least two groups two completely isolated groups one is in the bottom uh, right bottom left and another is the top right okay now this is two groups into the data set but when you see that there is actually three patterns or three class three type of classes into the data uh, setosa versicolor and virginica now and this is actual the groups so this is the groups into the data set okay now this is actually can be tackled as a classification problem so you have this data and you try to Id uh, identify a new flower into this one of these three groups this can be a classification problem but our objective is not exactly that our objective is to find the natural groups because you see these are not exactly natural groups formed inside and there can be a overlapping obviously and since we don't have any kind of domain knowledge or any kind of prior knowledge it will be very difficult to isolate these two groups because you have no knowledge you don't and you can only identify where the you know the binding or something is very loose and that's why you have to partition the data so obviously as i was saying in clustering if you want to identify the groups from a clusters or from the data set your first issue will be the overlapping cluster boundaries because in that place you will have to you know do some trade off and keep some of the and there will be misclassification and there's not in your control so how can you minimize that by selecting appropriate features so so obviously as i was saying this petal length and petal width are definitely not your distinct uh, you know distinguishable features in terms of versicolor and the virginica but in terms of setosa these are distinguishable features each of them so now this is our problem 
our problem is the clustering and we have to ide identify natural groups in a data set. Okay. So, now we are actually interested right now in a very particular application of clustering which is the segmentation. Now, segmentation need, does not need to have to come from the clustering. You can do segmentation based on clustering, but there are different approaches to segmentation also, but we are cur uh, currently interested into the uh, clustering based segmentation. Now, what is segmentation? This is a formal definition is the process of partitioning an image space into some non overlapping meaningful homogeneous regions <coughs> that is it. This is the very formal definition. So, what do you have to do? The classes or the segments or the clusters whatever you want to say they have to be non overlapping definitely. So, there cannot be any kind of ambiguity in there. Second thing it will have to be meaningful. So, every segment or every cluster must have some meaning and definitely they have to be homogeneous. Homogeneous means they have to be the inside variation of maybe the feature in this case we are maybe interested into the intensity feature the variation of the feature inside the class must be minimum. So, we say that homogeneous within heterogeneous between ok. So, and this is one of the statistical property we want to achieve in any of the clustering based techniques. So, if you look at this picture the first picture is a fireman's there are some fireman's and we have done we have generated segments from the first picture into three different ways. In the first case the segments you see the body the each of the body is one of the segment the skin which is the face one other segments the hats are the other segments. In the second picture in the second kind of segmentation we have done the segmentation based on the background and each of the object or each of the uh, fireman and the third kind of segmentation the segmentation is based on background and human that is it. So, you see we have done the partitioning, but in each case each of the partition has a different kind of meaning and so that is what I am going to say that segmentation does not need to have to be a unique solution it actually varies based on what your objective is uh, actually as we go through uh, I will show you some of the examples that uh, the output of segmentation varies depending on your objective. In the second case you see uh, we have actually done a segmentation based on aeroplane image. So, the segmentation is the background which is the sky and the aeroplane in the third case is a penguin image the segmentation is a penguin background and the ground and the second case a penguin and the background that is it. So, obviously the difference with clustering is the objects are specially connected and that is the main difference between segmentation and the clustering and in order to achieve this difference we have to input some additional constraint but or the modeling because in the when we are in the pluralistic domain we will use the term modeling but not the constraint so into the clustering problem. So, the objects are specially connected. Uh, so, uh, you see if you notice that in the fireman image in this uh, or not the fireman I think I okay, the aeroplane will be a better example you see the whole sky has there are some white objects right. So, the white object or the white pixels and ok the pixel may be a new term pixel means the smallest unit into the image or the smallest box or the minimum unit or ok maybe if you guys not all of you are the family with the digital image maybe digital image is just kind of a matrix that is it this is a matrix and the image is actually should I say that or you guys know how, how the images are generated yeah, I think they have a, they have ok ok then that is good ok I will not say that. So, ok so pixels are the smallest unit of the image mm, that is it and all of these small boxes have a color and so and these points and all of these pixels into the matrix they are have to be connected that means ok if I draw the picture this ones has to be connected with this neighboring pixels ok. So, if this one may be a red the neighborings should be in red only except they are an edge pixel because in the edge where the difference will be if this is the bounding of the uh, object. So, this one and this one may be different, but this, this since this is the in layer pixel this one and this one should be same. So, this is one of the that is so that is the main difference between clustering that the objects are spatially connected, but in the clustering problem they should you should not have this kind of constraint Maybe they can there should not be any special thing because if you notice that here the features are the petal length and the petal width. So, there this is the one of the features and they can be similar into the terms of the features, but here the space is actually one of the features. So, this this is actually some of the constraint we input when you go from the clustering to the segmentation. 
and also the feature set needs to be generated because in the clustering problem the features are actually given to you you know what are the features into the data but in the image there are i mean this is a whole new domain i'm not going to that how to generate or extract features from there Mm, sometimes I, I will mostly use the intensity based features, but there are other features like the texture features. You see that uh, again the fireman image, the texture of one fireman's dress and the other fireman's dress are the same. So these are the similar features actually. And if you do the clustering based on that feature, we can we can actually be able to cluster these two fireman's dresses into the same group because they are the texture based features. So this is another problem and you need to do that when you go from clustering to the segmentation. Okay. So now, right now, I'm, I'll show you some of the applications of the segmentation. Okay. Uh, oh. one yeah, 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 definitely. Exactly. So what you are saying? If you can you again slowly state your question. What do you exactly said? You said the eyes are white color and the, no, sorry, eyes are black, okay? Yes, yeah, sorry. Front part is white, the wings are black. So what are these? These are colors, right? So you are doing the clustering in your mind based on color features or the intensity features, right? So you are using white intensity. Overlap of white black. Mm -hmm. No, no, but white is actually a feature, is a color, right? Actually, we don't do the segmentation based on only colors. So the color is actually a feature. So that was my second point. You have to extract the features. You have to generate the features. So not always what you are seeing, and you are seeing the color here. So not always what you are seeing or what your color is actually give you the segmentation. So for achieve your segmentation, you have to include other features. Okay. So there can be other features like the texture maybe. You see, in here, the colors are not actually in the foreground is actually in a body is not actually white they are actually variation in white in fact if you want to do the segmentation based on white color you will not be able to do that because there are these ones are much darker this ones are much whiter so it will not be able to do that so exactly but you are doing clustering on the colors right that's what i'm saying you can't do that here you have to extract textures or other kind of features, maybe like um, transform domain. You have to go to the transform domain, like uh, what you say that, um, you know, like Fourier transformation? Like Fourier transformation gives you the features, but these are like the frequency kind of features. Uh, there are other features like uh, um, like wavelet. This give you spatiotemporal features. There are like uh, ripplet. They are like, um, you know, contourlet. There are different kind of features. Oh, man, sorry, these are different kind of transformations. So you have to go from this color domain to the other transform domain, where you can generate like other kind of features. Now, these are just kind of example. You can do like the you know Gabor transformation simply. So you can't do the segmentation based on only the colors. I mean, when you could see, say about the segmentation of image, people automatically think that you have to do the segmentation based on the color but it's not always the case because the color will not always give you the solution you have to use other kind of feature that's why i'm saying feature set needs to be generated in intensity is the automatic feature which is given to you but you have to generate other features in order to achieve the segmentation okay so in this case what you're saying in the based on color you can't do that that's the simple solution okay so okay uh, but in this case you can do in this in this example what I'm saying that uh, I want to do a brain and animal segmentation okay so my objective is to segment a brain maybe it may be healthy maybe diseased brain and I want to isolate the different structures or different tissue classes in the brain as I was saying your objective can be changed you can do the structural segmentation you can do the tissue class based segmentation like the structural means you have to identify or isolate different structures of the brain but uh, Today, I, I will actually mainly focus on the tissue class based segmentation. That means there are mainly three types of tissue class into the healthy brain. One is the cerebrospinal fluid. It's not technically a tissue class, this is the fluid. And, but the tissue classes are gray matter and the white matter. And our objective is to identify these three classes from a healthy brain. Okay? So why? Because this is important for detecting tumors, edema, if there is an unhealthy brain uh, and necrotic tissues. Uh, and the 
advantage of brain MR images because brain MR images are very easier cases. It's not like those penguin image because the classes are theoretically piecewise constant. I mean, um, I mean, I am not going to the MRI physics, but actually theoretically, the images are in MRI are generated based on the relaxation property of the magnetically excited hydrogen molecule of the water into the brain. Okay, so. Now, since this is a relaxation property, what they do actually, they expose the brain into a burst of radio frequency energy and they check that in which rate the tissues are actually shedding the energy and from that difference, the images are generated. It's not the color, it's actually the difference between the relaxation rate. That's how the images are generated. So, uh, obviously, mm, yeah. Which one is the injunction, white one or black one? Uh, can you repeat? Which one is the injunction? Uh, the white ones, white. sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah. Um, this is the this white part into the image like this is the cerebrospinal fluid this white one is the gray matter this is the uh, sorry this is the gray matter this is the white matter so, so you, yeah these are all distant so obviously the f this was the first criteria this should be non overlapping and yeah you can have asked one question there is something missing that is the yeah, background yeah now there is one thing is missing into the first image into the last one is that if there's a skull actually the skull region the outside part the mouse? oh yeah yeah mouse is there thanks yeah this part you see i mean i have started the segmentation from this portion okay because this is that's from where the brain region starts outside that in mri actually give you the all other information like the skull the fatty tissues outside the brain and what i am interested into the tissue class so which is inside the brain so obviously in order to achieve this one you have to do some skull stripping algorithm uh, i mean i can if you want i can say some of them but that's not my contribution my work is mainly do the segmentation of the brain soft tissues or the brain tissues because mri gives the information of the mainly soft tissues and the fluids or the um, liquids they actually appear as black this is actually the t1 modality depending on the modality they will change but that will complicate it more so i'm only focusing on the t1 modalities of the brain mri so uh, which um, is um, not technically noise because that's is a part of the image but uh, this portion is actually uh, is maybe you can say that not our uh, region of interest so in order to achieve that you have to do some skull stripping algorithm there are many algorithms many people work on that so I didn't focus on that problem but there are many tools available which will uh, you know is remove the skull from the image and only give you the main region of interest which is in the collection of the tissue classes or the soft tissues. So you know the extension of the MR? What is MR? <laughs> so yeah, so as I was saying that uh, all the tissues have should have the same kind of relaxation rate theoretically. That's why the brain MR images should be theoretically piecewise constant. So this is makes a problem much more serious, much more simpler. Okay? But it again gets complicated because of noise and artifacts. Now, noise is like the most of the case the salt and pepper noise, or you can remove them by kind of denoising filters. Okay, but I am more interested in one of the artifacts. I'm not going to say that how to solve that, but but that is one of my main area of interest, and that part actually makes the problem much more complicated. If you look at that, I mean, is these two images same? First one and third one. Yeah, there is a is darker maybe in the bottom right part, right? Uh, the main reason is that there are some kind of art. There is a one kind of artifact into brain MR images. We call it the intensity inhomogeneity artifact. Is that theoretically brain MR images are mainly theoretically piecewise constant, as I was saying. So the classes, the tissue classes, should have very minimum variance within. Okay, but the existence of this artifact, this artifact is we call it like slow spatially varying artifact so the artifact is very slow maybe very slowly changes and not, not very significant but it what it appears like it usually sometimes work in this direction or any other direction but most of the cases like this but what happens is that in this region they are m maybe very dark very slowly varies but as the dark then it gets little lighter then it can get again dark again so it is not like very salt and paper kind of thing very not random so you cannot remove it treat it as like a noise because that is slow and spatially varying and in terms of um, you know frequency concept 
noises are high frequency component while these are low frequency component because these are very average kind of information so they actually gets mixed into the data so if you try to put some denoising filter like if you try to get only the noise low frequency information they actually gets mixed more into the data so they are very difficult problem and this image this bottom image actually shows how what is the problem if you just take the first image this bias free image actually this is uh, as i am showing why i am saying that this is the same image because this is a simulated data so i just have simulated the information and these are the actually the same image same brain information if we just create a histogram from the first image and based on again the color you see that all this info all these tissue classes have very very minimum variance right so the non overlapping overlapping region here is very very less while due to the existence of this bias field artifact you see the overlapping region has been really increased right so if you just do the any kind of algorithm thresholding based maybe easily um, like otsu or any kind of algorithm like k means algorithm any kind of algorithm which performs like a thresholding based in this region where you will have the error or the misclassification while if you do the same kind of algorithm in this image you see here the overlapping region is much higher so here you will have the much more ambiguity much more misclassification so so this is the main problem so in order to get and this is actually the complexity into the mr images or the brain mr or any kind of mr this problem will be visible into any kind of mr images so in order to achieve your perfect seg uh, segmentation performance you have to remove this artifact otherwise you will have much much misclassification into the tissue class segmentation so um there are some other examples of what we can achieve by doing segmentation like this is like one of the case like this is actually the hep2 cells human epithelial cells these are like, um, uh, this is actually comes from the connected tissue diseases problem um, this is actually this test is actually the gold standard test to check whether a person has the connective tissue disease like the arthritis uh, lupus this kind of test and these cells are actually uh, creates generates different patterns when they come into contact with the blood of the patient who has this connective tissue disease so but in order to identify those patterns you first have to identify the cells so you can use kind of cell detection kind of problem uh, or the segmentation problem to achieve this cell detection or the cell delineation and you can use segmentation for tumor delineation or tumor segmentation like, what is the right side of the cells or the affected cells uh, maybe actually um, some of the cells are missing right here because um, the person who did the, this is a ground truth the person who did identify the ground truth information they skipped the partial cells so that's why all the cells only those cells are actually visible which are completely inside the frame so no, no, oh no, these are all the cells all the cells so that is the classification problem but i am only interested into the uh, clustering problem which is first have to have to in order to do that in order to classify whether the person has the disease you first have to identify the cells usually the person who does do this kind of analysis they hand hand select those cells they just manually crop those cells from the image uh, train it into a classifier like the machine learning or the deep learning based classifier and then they try to identify the cells okay but in order to do that in order to run the deep learning or the machine learning based technique any kind of supervised learning you first have to select the cells so i am only interested in the cell identification problem not the disease one so not the classification problem i am interested in type of cells yeah i just want to identify the cell not any kind of cells inside the frame and then i know what the cells are just crop those cells out and then train it into a classifier and just select that whether the person has the lupus or the arthritis or i for other other kind of diseases and um, depending on the disease they generate different kind of patterns like um, if i am not wrong as far as i remember some of the cases they are very very good shape in some cases they create this kind of patterns with a big hole in some cases they are very like um, i mean this is one cell this is another cell and these are all kind of different kind of patterns they they create depending on different kind of 
disease. I think this one's for the lupus. And I am not. I don't remember all the different kind of patterns. But you will get. You will see different kind of pattern in those images. So and this creates. And this is like the classification problem. I am not interested in the classification. I am in the segmentation problem. Just selecting the cells. Okay. And this one is actually another example of how the objective changes depending on what we want to get. Here also we have the all kind of tissues like gray matter, cerebrospinal fluid, white matter, but this is not our objective. We just want to isolate the tumor or not only the tumor because the tumorous region is mostly this one. This is the white region is mostly the tumorous region, but there are like necrotic tissues, edema. So we want to select the whole tumorous region including the edema as well as the necrotic tissues. So we just want to do the tumor delineation or the whole tumor segmentation. So but we are not interested into the other side like the cerebrospinal fluid gray matter white matter so this is this are the same again the brain mr image but we only interested in the tumor so this is kind of different kind of applications now how to get that how to achieve that there are i am interested into the clustering by segmentation techniques and i am mainly interested in the probabilistic clustering now I'll use the board a little bit if you are if you want to see that how the probabilistic clustering works. Now, probabilistic clustering uh, assumes the data as a mixture of some distributions. Like uh, you have a data set, okay? You have a big data set. Don't consider the image again. Now, just think about it. Just the data. That's it. This is one data set. This is other data is the third data okay you have just three clusters or classes into a data set and you want to identify these classes based on probabilistic clustering so the fundamental assumption of probabilistic clustering is that each class has a separate probability distribution and that is the fundamental criteria now you, it doesn't have to mean that all the probability distributions come from the same family it can happen that maybe this is normal maybe this is gamma <laughs> maybe this is uniform it is okay. Okay, the problem will be difficult. The mathematics will be complicated, but it is okay. I mean, all the classes have can have the different kind of family of distributions, but they must follow some of the distributions. So this is the main fundamental criteria of the probabilistic clustering. And so our problem actually changes from the clustering to identifying the parameters of the distributions. So each of the distribution, like maybe this one has normal, and normal has two parameters, mu and sigma. That's it. Maybe this is gamma. Maybe gamma has, you can have two type of parameters, or the maybe single parameter, anything. And uniform, you have just the bound maybe. So your problem changes from the clustering to the parameter estimation. And that's, that is the difference between the other kind of clustering problems to the probabilistic clustering. You just have to do the parameter estimation. That's it. And how to do that? So, um, I mean, obviously, the Gaussian mixture is the very popular, and and why Gaussian mixture is more popular into the image? There is a reason. Actually, in image, most of the classes is not always true into the clustering uh, or the any kind general kind of data like your text data or other kind of data. But uh, since I am worked on the image, in image, normal distribution has a reason because like usually the classes are monocentric or centered around a single point or a bound maybe and you can say that a single point or intensity represents the class with a some kind of variation like in the brain MR image obviously like all the tissues the tissues have a fixed relaxation rate so you have a you should have a mean relaxation rate and around that you have a very little amount of non over very overlapping region or the little amount of variation. As you see in the intensity distribution of the brain MR images, that all the classes have a single point and like an unimodal shape, right? So this is very this one is no, Gaussian mixture is very popular for the image processing scientists, not for the other scientists like the text mining or the other domain. Okay. So and we are assuming the whole data set like um, data is like you assume like yi the i object in the data is uh, comes from a uh, mixture of the distributions like this one's a this one's b this one's c just assume that so this comes from the like ai bi ci and this object belongs to maybe has some prior probability 
of belonging like this point 3 of belonging this set like point 4 of belonging this set like point 3 of belonging this set. So, every object has the different probabilities of belonging to one of the sets and uh, and this these classes have this own density or the probability values. So, and the, we call it as a mixture model because a uh, object or the intensity value of a or the feature of ith object has the mixture of the probability densities of the other classes or the all the classes. So, is it okay in the probabilistic one? And uh, is everyone okay with the probability density normal distribution in this kind of concept, right? Okay, okay, that's good. Hmm? Why is the feature here? Definitely. Uh, AI is the density. I, I mean, I could have used that like the normal. I just use that like to show that you can have any kind of distribution. Like in my work, I actually use the mixture of the normals and uniform. So you can have any kind of distributions. But um, yeah, this is the actually you can say this is the density function. No. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to that. <laughs> I'll completely write uh, step by step. <laughs> So, and uh, maybe I think this slide will be more helpful. Yeah. Keep it with me. So, we want to model the density of each of the pixels, right? So, we want to see this is the feature and yi, and we want to find the probability of this one. Theta is the parameter set, that's it. So, this one should be. Um, or theta or maybe like um, or th okay, theta is the good one. So, uh, and this comes from this y i can come from any of the sets, right? Any of the objects or any of the classes. So, uh, the according to the law of total probability is like uh, probability of A, we can represent it like sum over probability of B i into probability of A given B i. I maybe we want to Okay, this is the uh, theory of total probability, and this bi's are each of the clusters. So, and each of the clusters clusters can have some kind of prior probability, and we can represent like like wi, which in this case was like 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0 0.3. So, this was the prior probability of each of the class, and these are the probability that the object belongs to this class, and because this bi is the condition bi is the class so the object what is the probability of this object belongs to this specific class and this is actually your probability density function of that class which if this is like normal distribution maybe you can write is like that uh, maybe normal distributions of yi given parameter set like mu k sigma k square write like 1 by root 2 pi sigma k e to the power minus half y i minus mu k by sigma k whole square. So, this is the just normal distributions probability. So, this is this is actually traditionally known as the mixture model just comes from the theorem of total probability which I have written there. This is the theorem of total probability and so the mixture model and so if you have this kind of a data you see you can't represent this data set in terms of a single distributions right so in order to model this one you use you think that there may be three of the classes and you try to fit this data set using three normal distribution which in this case we see that we have three distribution like one is the normal minus 0.63 with variance 0.712 etc etc so we want to model a single data set in terms of a mixture model or the mixture of normals which we have done in this case now what is the problem uh, when you want to do the parameter estimation now so our objective is again in this case if you have a mixture of normal distributions is that we want to see maybe if you have three classes we want to select parameters mu i sigma i square or maybe we can write in the k k or the l is traditional l for the classes and um, I I will use for the to denote the objects. Okay. So here L maybe 1 to 3, that is it. So you want to estimate its parameters. Now when you want to do estimate the parameters from a probability distribution, what do you do? 
we usually do maximum likelihood estimation which is a very popular or who are interested into the bayesian statistics they use the maximum apostatory uh, maximum apostatory estimation why what is the main difference between maximum apostatory and the maximum likelihood i'll first say the maximum likelihood um, is maximum likelihood everybody knows okay so you know maximum likelihood estimation no okay okay so i'll just briefly state that what is maximum likelihood estimation actually what i why i am saying that because uh, uh, you said that uh, people doesn't know expectation maximization algorithm which is actually the main tool when you do the probabilistic modeling so and in order to go to the expectation maximization we have to go through the maximum likelihood estimation so i am starting from there a little bit okay so we have the data yi's and maybe xi denotes the level of the ith object okay this is the terminology i will use and our classes have maybe the lab and we are since you are using mixture of normal because that's the easier so we will use the parameters at this in this way so you can try to keep it oh okay sorry is it smaller okay sorry <laughs> Yi, Xi. Okay. So we want to estimate. We have information of this one. This is the intensity feature or any kind of feature, and we want to estimate the X size because the X size are our class labels, right? Because we want to get the class labels. That's our objective. So we want to do. We can do that. by getting the joint distribution of the probabilities and given the class labels sorry given the intensities and we want to maximize this probability because this is actually the formulation of both maximum apostatory as well as a maximum likelihood estimation because we want to maximize this probability the probability of the class labels given the intensity features okay now this ones is actually probability y given x into probability of x by probability of y okay now this is the probability of the intensity features which are all known so we can just drop this one from the model so our objective is to maximize this probability probability of y given x and probability of x now in maximum likelihood estimation we assume this distribution of the class labels as uniform and since this is uniform into the mle model this part is actually gets dropped i'll come to this part when i'll do the maximum apostatory estimation and this part is actually what is the difference between the maximum likelihood and the maximum apostatory estimation okay so in emily yes we want to maximize probability y given x okay and if those guys who know that uh, you see that this is the joint probability and this is exactly the prob i mean y curl is actually the collection of all the y's right y1 y2 to yn so this is the this is the joint probability and this jo and these are obviously independent so this is actually the product of the individual probabilities sorry okay and this is what we call as the likelihood function traditionally we call it and when we do the log transformation we what we find what we call is as the log likelihood function sorry and this is all the these are the density functions i mean probability of the intensity given the class label so these are the density functions actually and when this is when you are talking about the normal these are the normal densities okay so we we just to optimize this function and we estimate the parameters and we you all know that and in those you don't know we'll do it in the class okay but this is the actual the algebraic formulation now in the apex apostatory model we actually have kind of distribution of this part and uh this part is again comes in here and we actually optimize this function we estimate the parameters but here we also have the dependency on the distribution of the class labels okay 
and this is the probability of the class labels distribution and actually this part is the main difference between the clustering and the segmentation because in clustering you do not assume any dependency on the class labels. However, in segmentation I said that the pixels are specially connected or specially dependent and this dependency is actually incorporated into the probabilistic model via this function and that is where the dependency comes because this portion is always the probability of the intensity given the class labels. So, this is always the density functions, but this is what this part is actually makes a difference and that is why for segmentation you would not do the maximum likelihood estimation, but the maximum apostory estimation. However, in clustering these are both same because there is no dependency of the class labels. Okay. Now, why can't we do this thing into our mixture model? Right. We can do it very easily because you see we can have the log function and this is the probability functions you just do 1 by root 2 pi sigma e to the power minus half y i minus mu k by sigma k square. So, this is the exponential function this portion is very this is a very constant term this is the logarithm of the minus log of sigma and this portion is a just a square function the f just doing the second order derivative from this function is very easy you can easily do the parameter estimation. But what happens if you have mixture model in that case this function actually changes to sum over log and this what is probability function is actually this one sum over maybe w i sorry w l y i given theta l what I did wrote there right. Now, this is actually our density function in this case this density is actually a mixture. So, you have a summation function inside logarithm previously it was actually a product function. So, that was easy, but here you have a summation inside logarithm you cannot actually do any kind of algebraic operation after that. So, this actually becomes a infeasible problem. So, now you cannot do the maximum likelihood estimation you actually you do not have this way to do the estimation. Just no, no, these are parametric. Obviously, everything is parametric. We have the parameters, but just because you have the mixture model, oh, okay, mixture model. in mixture model, oh, in mixture, so yeah. Oh, okay. If this is just a model, you have the data from a single distribution. Oh, okay. You can so do it. Yeah. Any kind of cluster. Any of these cells. Any of these cells. Any so, of the yeah, you have to estimate parameters from a mixture. So you have a summation inside logarithm. So you can't do the algebraic operation after that. So in mixture model you cannot do the maximum likelihood estimation. So, you have to find some alternative. Now, what is the alternative? That is EM algorithm. Okay. Oh, this function? This is maybe normal distribution. This is a normal distribution. Yeah, yeah, just like this. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I use the is like this one. W i is write a prior maybe 0.3 do not assume any distribution. No, I is the yeah, I is the objects and uh, L is the classes. So, I can come from each of this. Okay. Uh, okay. Some some the classes. Yeah, summation over the classes I mean that is why I fix this you know subscript in this way like I means object L means class. So, you cannot do mathematical thing you can do that you can do numerical analysis of course, yeah numerically all this, but um, since we are very interested very very good kind of function very mathematically representable. Yeah. So, you, now um, in MLA you will not give very closed form solution. So, you have to you do you can do always do numerical analysis. Numerical analysis can provide the closed solutions to EM or no? Not if they converge <laughs> they obviously there is a convergence problem. So, that is why the alternative is EM. EM is still MLE. I will prove that EM is still uh, MLE, but in a different way. Okay. So, I will remove this one. Wait. Okay. Now, what is EM? E means expectation, M means maximization. 
and this maximization is again either MLE or map I mean maximum apostory so this part is still MLE we will still do MLE but with an addition additional expectation function so no. exactly to uh, avoid this one and we will do it uh, in a different way so we will again do the priority x given y priority x and maybe we can avoid this one also just keep this one into consideration so what we first do we will try to do a expectation and instead of doing the maximum likelihood function we try to do a q function which we call it expected complete data log likelihood and <laughs> say that again ok so we call it expected complete data log likelihood this is expectation this logarithm and this is again the complete data like the joint probability of the x and y so and and this is the expectation given the intensities because these are the known and this is the parameter set which is um, actually uh, this is actually iterative I will come into that later the meaning of this theta. So, this logarithm this is again product over probability x and y right this is the same is Now, uh, we will do a little trick here. Okay, we can we can keep it outside the log inside, okay. And what we do now is an object can belong to a one class at a time obviously because they are non overlapping that was our fundamental criteria. So, instead of using uh, and what is x i? x i can be maybe belong to 1 2 if you have l classes if you have l classes x i can belong to this is actually one of these l objects right. So, we create a new function new variable maybe maybe tau maybe gamma gamma i l which is 1 if x i is l 0 otherwise ok. So, we just create a you know uh, indicator variable that is it. Now, we write probability y i given x i like sorry given l Can I write that? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Hi, I'm Mushidil. I'm like border. Can I write that? That is a indicator variable. Oh, sorry. No, this one. I will again write the indicator variable. Uh, but how do we define y i l? Sorry. This is the definition. If x i is l, and then it is 1. Don't know whether x i is belong to l or not. No, no, no. But I can just assume that, right? Oh, you are I can have a l set of indicator variables. That is it. And just I just represent it in this way. Okay, that is clear and we replace it in here. So, for each class you have an gamma here. Exactly. So, q function now becomes expectation of sum over i sorry this is i sum over l logarithm of this 
there is this still the dependence on the y i and theta. So, that is ok. Hmm? Summation, expectation over summation. No, no. Oh, sorry, sir. This is equal to sorry. This was the equal. This one's right. Or this is the expectation. Yes. Then is equal to expectation of logarithm over log over product. Yes. So this product is outside now. So the next step you have taken the expectation inside. No, 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 no. Expectation is always outside. This is summation. Then in that case, then inside the bracket. Mm -hmm. This one. Uh -huh. So, P x i, how P i x i is coming? Or it is in that summation? No, no, that is the first part. Second part, P x y is there. P x is there. The this, uh, this line? P x i. P or P x i is there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, top one has to reach it. This is the error. It does not matter. This is the prior probability. That does not matter here. You can keep it here. Oh, do not worry. Yeah, yeah, okay, sorry. <laughs> I mean, you can keep like, um, okay. if you want that, write it PXI. This is the prior. This part is, is not that important I, because you do not have parameter there, right? This this is the dependency of the uh, class labels. You do not have parameter there. This is the main important area, okay. We want to do the estimate the parameters of the class uh, of the normal distributions, which is actually into this part intensity given classes. The class, the distribution of the classes is not that important. That will be important. <laughs> I will explain that later, but it is not now. Okay. So, this is okay. Now, this is the summa expectation of a summation. <coughs> so, that is no problem. And this portion is actually the density function. That is again not the problem. So, the expectation is only with this indicator variables, nothing else. Okay. No, mm, that portion not Okay, uh, we have we need to find the indic uh, expectation of the indicator variable, which is nothing but just probability of x i equal to l, right? That's it. So, so uh, actually, y i given l, x i equal to l given y i. Sorry, hmm. because uh, the <laughs> I I missed I actually missed that this y i was there. So obviously this condition has come into this portion. So, okay. And this is actually the posterior probability of the belongingness of a object into a specific class. This is actually a posterior probability, not this prior probability like this one. This is the posterior probability and this is actually the segmentation information. Because here we are actually finding whether this object will belong to this class given the feature which is in this case the uh, intensity. So, this is actually the segmentation. So, I mean this can be written like probability of y i given l probability of l by probability of y i. You can estimate that and this estimation function I actually derived the whole uh, complete data log likelihood, but this is actually the expectation of the tau i l given y i. We actually write it like maybe sorry gamma i l like tau i l is a new variable which is the posterior probability of a belongingness of object to a specific class, which is the segmentation information and this is actually the expectation. When I said this expectation, this that means that expectation of a latent variable into th from the data and we are actually estimating this latent variable from the data, which is actually the segmentation information in this case and this portion is the expectation function and since I derived the whole thing, so we do not do that while do that write the program. So, we first estimate this variable because you know everything. We know the prior probabilities, you know the distribution of each class and it from there you can easily estimate the posterior probabilities. You find the expectation. Now, you use this estimation function into this um, sum over i, sum over l logarithm of these densities. Now, you see you can do your this is this is the uh, density functions this is the density of the normal distributions oh, and you know the distributions right or cluster. we know the distribution we don't know the parameter this is what we want to estimate because our problem is still the parameter estimation problem but there in the using mle we couldn't do the parameter estimation because we had a summation inside logarithm function but in this way using this uh, complete data log likelihood function e expected data log likelihood function instead of the only likelihood function we actually
have been able to isolate or keep the summation function outside the logarithm and that is the whole idea of the expectation maximization algorithm. You have to take the summation outside the logarithm that is it ok. And now you have it out and you can do the you can estimate the parameters ok. And now in the first step yeah, using only the indicator function and this is actually the trick this is the tricky part that is it. So, yeah now in the first case and obviously when you have to do the expectation maximization algorithm in the first step uh, you will do a you know some kind of very initial segmentation based on that and you will do the estimation function and based on that you will do the maximization or the estimation of the parameters. But the problem is that your initial segmentation is obviously flawed because if you, you do not have the knowledge of from the data uh, you do not have the knowledge of the segmentation information directly. So, based on after estimating this parameter into the second step you use actually this parameter information into the expected function because you see this is actually a simultaneous problem because when I said that you can easily estimate this one in the first case this is that this is the density function and you do not know the parameters because that is what you want to achieve. So, you do not have this knowledge. So, in the first case you have to do some initialization or the initial segmentation information to extract this value or maybe initial parameters estimation maybe just very uniform very small probability values or something like that sorry small variance and keep the mean of these classes or the first term do some initial clustering something like that and just use that to estimate this density functions and get the latent variables use the latent variables to estimate these parameters, but obviously the latent variables were flawed. So, from there obviously the parameter estimations will be flawed now use this parameter into the estimation of the latent variables and again estimate the maximize do the parameter estimation. So, this is actually iterative algorithm. So, because you do not know any of them and you want to simultaneously achieve the optimal segmentation performance. So, this is actually iterative algorithm which simultaneously optimizes these two steps. So, this is the expectation maximization algorithm in brief. Any questions? Okay. So, and this is what we call as a probabilistic clustering because expectation maximization algorithm is actually the main tool into the uh, probabilistic clustering because you have to estimate the parameters from the mixture model. And as I said I showed everything as an I use normal distribution as an example because it gives a pretty good distribution or pretty good modeling of the data. However, again the problem with normal distribution is you are using a single point to represent a class or the class mean because when you are using normal distribution why I am saying a single point is this is what normal distribution looks like like that right. So, everything is depending on this mean this single point uh, and this is in this point the probability density is highest. So, you can say that in if the object belongs to and very loosely you can say that if an object belongs to this point it has the highest probability of belonging to the class or maybe you can say that it is definitely belongs to the class because it kind of ensures, but if you go to this region here the probability drops. So, in this point you say you have the definitely belonging and here you can say that it, it will belong or it will not belong depending on uh, the probability value right. So, to solve the problem uh, we introduce an another concept uh, which we call is the rough sets. Rough sets is a set theory concept introduced around late 1980s by Pawlak in Poland. Now, what is rough set? Mm, okay. okay, I can show it from the picture here. So, rough set is uh, means you want to represent a set into imperfect world. Okay, or okay, the board will be better assume this is your universe this is actually your universe I draw it in this way because that means that this granules need not to be uniform ok. So, you have only this object into the universe and you want to represent if you want to represent this object into the universe how are you going to do that that is the whole funda whole concept of the uh, rough set ok. So, you want to represent this set into this imperfect universe. 
so obviously you can't precisely do that so you can do it into two ways like um, uh, in the calculus like the lower approximation lower set lower Riemannian calculus or the Riemannian in integration you can do in two way you can just select only those points which exactly is lower than that or others which have the uh, non zero overlapping with the whole set like sorry uh, this object definitely belongs to this class right this one this one um, okay assume this one also this one this one this one these are the objects which are definitely inside this set so this is actually you see you can say that this is the lower approximation of the set into this universe right while all this set has non zero overlapping this one also this one also so and this actually constitutes the upper approximation of the set into the universe so we are actually want to represent one set into a different kind of universe by in terms of two sets one the collection of the granules which de definitely belongs to the uh, inside the set and the granules which has non zero overlapping with the set okay uh, this is just um, i have written this similar thing here and that set will be definable if you have no if your non over the non overlapping set actually non zero overlapping set is actually the null so um, lower upper lower approximation so the set will be definable or exact or non rough if this lower and upper approximation are the exactly same so this is the concept of rough set now yeah exactly exactly i mean upper is the uh, boundary plus the interior in mm, no boundary means the boundary in plus the lower approximation i mean the lower approximation set no no because the set is not definable right i mean i mean you are talking about this whole one this is the universe right and this is the set yeah yeah but the set is not definable here because the, in this universe uh, these objects cannot be cannot belong separately they are all part of the granule so this granule which are actually is subset of the original set is the lower approximation and the boundary region is actually the those portion or those granules which have the non zero overlapping so the, the boundary plus lower approximation is the upper approximation so Hmm? that's how this is the definition okay now what actually we have tried to do we actually try to introduce this definition into probabilistic model because in probabilistic model i mean many people have already tried to establish this concept of rough sets into other kind of representation like uh, you know fuzzy sets and uh, I'm mostly in fuzzy sets uh, or maybe sometimes sometimes genetic algorithms people have tried to do that but not in the probabilistic model because the problem with probabilistic model is that you cannot tweak into the objective function you have to do change the actual the base model so what we have tried to do we try to introduce the concept of rough sets into the modeling or the probabilistic distribution and we try to develop a new distribution actually so this is uh, the and this name is actually like <laughs> i am actually like given that because it's kind of like someone has stomped over the normal distribution so that's why like the stomped normal but anyway so it's kind of like it's nothing but the upper truncation of the normal distribution but it not need not to be normal distribution this criteria of the rough sets can be incorporated into other distributions also i myself have tried to do it two distribution one is the normal another is the student's tree distribution but yeah this is simply more or less the upper truncation but we can do this just the truncation way because then again we will have this computationally infeasible problem like we cannot find a close from solution so we have to we had run this in a tricky way so and we try to incorporate the concept of rough sets into the normal distribution and this is how we have defined the probability um, this is the probability function and uh, pdf function and uh, this is the property of the distribution some something we develop like uh, this is like uh, this can be 
thought as a general generalization like in specific case like if the we have in property with parameter k if that converts to zero then the distribution will boil down to a gaussian distribution and this is the whole concept of the rough i mean the rough probabilistic model where we are trying to model a class or the interesting distribution in terms of this new new storm normal distribution so capital is a normalizing constant can again uh yeah it's normal it's not normalizing constant it's actually that i remember that is actually twice of 1 minus capital phi k plus k phi k i remember that that's i write this small phi is the uh, pdf of the standard normal and capital phi is the cdf of the standard normal so k is a parameter here exactly <laughs> no no k is not fixed here that i mean we'll try to estimate this one that's our whole objective because k is now a parameter but how do relate this to expectation i'm not relating it now i'll come that later i'm not this is a proper problem yeah, yeah. i have done i mean mgf also exists is for that yeah and also the moment gd function also exists i have done the math also so, so the parameter yeah we have a new parameter previously we had two parameters like mu l and sigma l now we have k l also i actually have written it like this k because i didn't use any kind of subscript there because just to defining the probability but k is now a new parameter we we'll try to estimate this with now why i mean what is the motivation of using this new distribution is because we are assuming that i mean i have done this mainly for the started from the brain mr images but i have used in the cell detection and tumor detection problems also and i have done used it at other clustering problems also the thing is that we are assuming that a object is one single intensity value in gaussian distribution is actually representing the class because in that point the probability density is highest or this point actually ensures the belongingness of the object into the class right because that is a posi position of highest probability but in reality you can't use a single point to represent a cluster it can be a point i'm not saying it cannot be a point but it can be a interval also so instead of a single point i am saying that don't restrict to a single point but keep it as region so is it going to reduce the variance uh actually little bit no i mean i am not saying that uh, it can be gaussian it, the variance can be reduced cannot be reduced but i am not saying that uh, i mean you see this gaussian distribution is a special case right so in case the distribution actually the parameter k is estimated as zero because we are doing the parameter estimation all from the expectation maximization so it will boil down to a gaussian distribution so using a new parameter we are giving it you can say a new degrees of freedom kind of thing. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this one. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you see, the misclassification is due to the variance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. So, if the variance is no, means if, if, if it is bit like this way, mm -hmm. in that case, the misclassification will be reduced. Little bit. Is that yeah. The, uh, intuition behind this. uh actually no but you can say it is kind of a correlate <laughs> but no, i mean the lemma but uh, no no the motivation was not like that i mean uh, the motivation was just to give it a new f i mean degrees don't don't yeah degrees of freedom not only degrees of freedom don't restrict like maybe usually in the t1 modality like 137 is the intensity value where the white matter region arises okay white matter is usually in that point but don't restrict it to the 137 but give it like from 134 to like 140 just give it a whole range so and capture the middle to histogram in, in the middle right so yeah. uh, using that uh, yeah i mean in that if a object belongs to in this region it definitely belongs to the class so i am just give instead of a single point he is trying to capture this 
10 and 15 so uh, how much would mean is 10 and 15 right is trying to you are trying to capture the uh, whole plane whole plane most exactly data, most of the data, data inside the region but even if it is there mm -hmm. right like you will always classify it in the same terms because it generally in classification no 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 earlier what is what true 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 no no no, no you are you are saying right what you are saying is right yeah yeah because yeah. but because the probability is high probability is relatively higher compared to the other class right yes. but not was the highest yeah, yeah. but now i actually it just modeling it to no, no, as the highest yeah, yeah, you see, if, if something like 30 mm -hmm. we are going to put it in which class no no you are right i am saying that class, right? he's right so if it is highest then it's perfect even if it's highest it still it is probabilistic right yes. but based on the probability i am assigning it in that region because the probability is higher but Highest probability? No, 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 no. Highest compared to the other classes. Other classes. Yeah, yeah. Yes. exactly. In the group, yeah, yes. yeah. In the Relatively higher. higher. But now I am saying that don't compare it. If it is that region, it definitely belongs. There should not be any ambiguity in that region. I am just partitioning the uh, probability from the in that region is not probabilistic. I am saying the membership or the I mean I am assuming the posterior probability as the membership because in in here in probability model we usually use the term membership now the membership or the posterior probability in this region is not probabilistic now it is uh, you can say is highest or it def it is there is no ambiguity it because in that region in that region yes. I mean you are saying in the flat region no I mean oh, theoretically I mean, you are saying that. I mean, the sorry, overlapping in that sense. I mean, you are saying that. Uh, I am saying overlapping in that uh, flat region. Like that? Uh, no, something like uh, here. Mm -hmm. You put the back and mm -hmm. take. No, no, left side, left side. Okay. Yes. Okay. Left side. You just you just go to the middle of that. Okay. And and draw a normal. Just normal would mean is just right. Okay, uh, maybe yes. this way. No, no, no. Because variance is higher. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Mm. This region. Okay, anyway, 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 yeah, yeah. That I'm saying in the in that case, the second one that that was K is zero. According my definition, you will classify in that group. In that group, right? No, but it will not be the when you are doing the modeling uh, so how was your data in the first case then i see i am i am scooping oh. oh okay okay I'm yeah scooping. okay hmm? i am asking whether is it possible that is oh okay so you are saying that if in this region i mean what i assume that you are saying instead of this re distribution if it is kind of like if even if you are using normal distribution here instead of using this new kind of distribution uh, yeah, yeah, please, please, come on. That will be easier. <laughs> so, the question is that suppose if this is there, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, suppose yes, this is there. Yes, no, I can't have it. Huh. So, so, suppose there is one distribution here, okay? Oh, okay. okay. So, here, if some point is here, mm -hmm. so according to you, you are saying that it should be, if it is a some flat part, mm -hmm. it, you are going to. Uh, you are going to assign it to group one. Yeah, different. What I am saying that this point, mm -hmm. the PTF is more than this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I am saying that I will put in group two. So yeah. that is my question. So yeah. what what is the point? Here? Yeah, definitely. So what I said in here, this is actually the algorithm is estimating, right? So in if some case arises, the range will not be like that because we are not giving, we are not predefining the bound. So okay. We are estimating the bound. It is not possible. That it's saying. not possible. It's definitely not possible because this bound is like uh, mu l plus minus k l sigma l, right? So we are estimating this bound automatically from the data. So this kind of case will definitely not arise, okay? Because we are estimating the, all the parameters, so it will actually give you the best fit by minimizing the expected log likelihood function because a mixture model or the maximum likelihood function. So this kind of case will definitely not arise. Okay. So, yeah. Now, our problem is again. Now is your answer. Is now our problem is again a mixture model, the mixture of these new distributions, and instead of the strong normal distribution, we will do the math based on the new distribution. But here we have a new definition of the region because previously the region was just a based on a 
minus infinity to plus infinity because the that is what the range of the normal distributions but now we have a two states one is the lower approximation region where the like is the mu l plus minus k l sigma l region oh sorry oh uh, sorry i didn't notice the time sorry so yeah so our range was like mu l plus minus sigma l like this is the lower approximation region so you are okay with that this is the lower approximation and the boundary region is the outside region and now do the expectation maximum diagram because what i taught you previously so yeah now again complete likelihood expectation step the yeah so again the rough set means the lower if the object belongs to the lower approximation region is definitely belongs so do the membership as one and this is the expect this is the estimation of the parameters like mu sigma l i didn't write the k because k is not is not giving a close form solution is actually a uh, numerical solution we have to use that for details you can always write the paper you can read the paper and this is the algorithm so you are giving an input variable input image do some initial parameter estimation and segmentation estimate the class level then do the estimate membership like this estimate parameters from here and then check that if the maximum dynamic iteration has reached or the they are converging or if not do the iteration again and if it converges you have the actually the segmentation into three classes cerebrospinal fluid gray matter and white matter now in this framework i didn't use the intensity inhomogeneity artifact which i previously said that this is a shading artifact because that's a little complicated uh, formulation um okay but uh, how when when is their class okay okay five ten minutes right okay if there is the intensity inhomogeneity feature uh, uh, then the model becomes like why is like ui and bi uh, plus some noise so we usually drop the noise and this is a multiplicative framework so we previous we first do the logarithmic function and we just do the logarithmic function and we do the same procedure based on logarithmic function and we use some additional parameters because now bias field is a new parameter here and the actually the model gets little complicated so i kept the simple one <laughs> so now what is the advantage of this new distribution this is a just a example you see we had two features one and two and see we, ha we had some outliers in the top right we had some outliers now if you use the yeah no no yeah that's why i came here so if you are using the gaussian distribution to get the to generate the means this is the actually the these black boxes are actually the means here so if we use the gaussian distribution to get the clusters obviously the means are actually prone to the noise and outliers so as we as is evident from this image however if we use the our new storm normal distribution this is really the, even the mean is free from the effect of the outliers okay we see that this mostly stays at the middle point where the mean should be right and this is the advantage i mean obviously the mean is a moment measure and this should be affected and to the this is synthetic data set definitely this is synthetic data set i generated that to show this that generated using normal mm, no oh. i mean yeah we can say that like normal distribution and or, or just random yeah you can say that the normal distribution and just kept some of the outliers so yeah i don't think it's normal actually because it's not normal we just generated just not normal but i mean we designed this data in this way with a very small number of points so this is this very easily can be done but yeah even the mean is the free from the effect of the outliers okay so this is the main advantage uh there is actually uh, another motivation i'll just just say in one line is that uh, i actually introduced the concept of kurtosis into the distribution because why kurtosis because previously we were using a single distribution to represent a class however we can do the we can use represent a class into a mixture of the monocentric distributions like i mean this is the alternative definition to the st student's t distribution from the normal distribution i actually use that definition i mean uh, when we see the student's t distribution we actually find an we know that there's a density function but there's a alternative definition to the student's t distribution where student's t can be thought as a infinite sum of the normal sorry of the normal with the gamma prior this is the alternative definition to the student's t distribution so i actually use that definition and use the mixture of the infinite mixture of this new storm normal with the gamma prior and we actually uh, we actually define this new distribution like student's storm t distribution where we have the vary the kurtosis parameter yes so in this case which class do you uh, which class if, if you 
Each of the classes. All the classes. All the individual clusters. I mean, no, no, no. Previously, when we j used the distribution, we used, uh, we represent each cluster uh, using a single distribution, which was like previously people use Gaussian, then people use Tom normal. But now what I am using, I am representing one cluster using a mixture of the Tom normal, infinite mixture with gamma prior, which is actually a single distribution we denote as a Tom t, because that is the alternate definition to the, uh, like similar to the student's t, but more complicated mathematics and definitely a new parameter again new parameter which is actually giving us a better estimate and why better is because theoretically using that i mean this is again i uh, saying this is a very generalized distribution because you see from here we can actually specific special cases we can boil down to t distribution this can mimic students stomp t sorry storm normal as well as we can mimic it can mimic the gaussian so it's a much generalized distribution which in special cases it can mimic any of the probability distribution of course they are they have to be like uni uh, not unimodal like monocentric but yeah and yes that's the main difference i mean in the mathematics we actually we are actually getting a new latent variable apart from the membership function we are getting a new variable we are calling it like the variable which estimates the inlandness now this new variable you see previously there was only this tau i l which was the membership function but we have a new parameter sorry new latent variable and what is the advantage of this one this one is actually much much free from the effect of the outliers and this actually this is a much robust estimate of the mean or the much robust estimate of the parameter you see all here the storm normal still has some kind of inconsistency i could have just put some other kind of outlier then this difference will be very much evident I, I actually didn't make another simulated data, but this one will definitely not be affected of this one because this gives a much robust estimate of the parameters. So that's the main advantage and the main motivation of developing is this new distribution. Um, yeah. So this is the some of the examples. What I think, what can you do based on this probabilistic clustering? Because that's our motivation was the segmentation. So you see, this is some of the input images. In the left, there were some simulated images, simulated brain MR images. These are some of the real brain MR images. In the middle row is actually the ground truth data, which the expert has manually annotated. annotated. And these images, what we have generated without any information. That's the main difference. We had no idea. I mean, we don't know who is the, what is the cat, what is dog. We don't know what is white matter, what is gray matter, what is cerebrospinal fluid, because that's completely unsupervised. But we are still being able to isolate the classes, and that's the advantage of this unsupervised learning. Because usually, if you want to do like class segmentation, like when you do the supervised learning, you have to know that where is the gray matter, cerebrospinal fluid, or the white matter. But the advantage of unsupervised learning is that you don't have to have any prior knowledge, but still you can be able to do the segmentation. You can be able to identify this is the cerebrospinal fluid, this is the uh, white matter, this is the gray matter. Okay, now. This is the advantage of doing clustering. This is just the application I am showing some. This is the brain MRI segmentation. And this is just a um, box plot. I am just showing that the advantage of this technique. You see, using this technique, the first one, this is actually the new storm T distribution. This is the storm normal distribution. This one was student's T distribution. And this one was Gaussian distribution. And this is the difference. You see, the middle bar is actually the median. This is the first quartile, this is the third quartile, minimum, maximum. This is the box plot, box and whisker plot actually, more traditionally known as. You see that using these new distributions, we can have much better segmentation accuracy in terms of three indices, like this is the dice specificity, specificity. I mean, these are like, I mean, three of the indices are actually important because uh, you see the, you know, the two cross two plot box, like true, true positive, true negative, false positive, false negative. This one actually reduce, minimizes the false negative. This one minimizes the false positive. This is the gold standard dice coefficient. So using this new distribution increases the segmentation accuracy. If we want to do, we initially said that we want to do the cell detection. These are some of the performance of the cell detection. These are the input images. This was the ground to the data, and this was the results which we generated. Yes. Um, oh, okay. No, I, do you have any question? Okay. So yeah, uh, this is the performance of our algorithm. 
without having any knowledge of the cells we are able to do the cell delineation this is actually a segmentation natural image segmentation this is one of the Barclay two of the Barclay images and you initially said that without having any knowledge how can we isolate based on the color the classes we are not because you see here the ground truth uh, the sky inside the bridges were actually classified as uh, in the ground truth segmentation this regions the sky inside the bridges they are assuming as the bridge because uh, I mean this is the ground truth data this is the expert has decided I mean this is the we want to achieve uh, like this everything inside is actually regarded as the sheep but since we are doing the color based segmentation we are not even able to distinguish that so even if some of the colors like is the black it will appear as black so this is the difference between in the clustering so because this is the unsupervised again I am saying this is the unsupervised so we do not have any knowledge which is the sheep what is the bridge but based on the colors or the other features we have been able to do the segmentation and this is an example of the tumor delineation um, these are some of the brain MR images and our objective was to isolate the tumors and these are some of the results of the tumor segmentation so and our results are much accurate you see without having any training knowledge supervised knowledge we are still able to create the tumor delineated, delineated tumors and which are similar to the ground truth so that is it uh, I think you do not have any time I actually kept some of the hidden markup model because um, but um, since you guys have do not have time I, mean, I have time but you guys do not have so <laughs> I am omitting this region so I mean hidden marker model is actually what the where the difference is between the clustering and the segmentation because uh, based on this hidden marker model I mean uh, have 5 minutes or 2 3 ok ok just give I will just say one thing is that what is Markov model is that uh, what is Markov what does Markov mean Markov has the one concept is that future depends on present not on past that is it that is the concept of Markov like 1 2 3 3 depends on 2 but not on 1 2 depends on 1 but not on like 0 ok so just every object depends on its predecessor it can be by chain based like if you have 4 like bidirectional so 3 can depend on 2 or 4 but not on 1 that can be bidirectional now if there is a field like is a 3d model so every object just only depends on his first order neighbors that is it in the 3d frame like 8 neighbors and that is the concept so uh, probability distribution of this object given the whole image is actually the same as the probability distribution of the object given its first order neighbors and that is called the Markov model now Markov model is actually applied on the class label domain but that is unobservable we cannot see that we can only observe the intensity not the class levels and that is why the Markov is here hidden that is why the name hidden Markov model because we are using the Markov model which comes from the Markov process but it is hidden here because that is unobservable that is why hidden Markov model and uh, but yeah we actually use that but the, there are some problems so we actually try to modify the problem of the hidden marker model because hidden marker model does over segmentation at the edge pixels because I said initially that the in edge pixel hidden marker model will not work and people when use the traditional hidden marker there are problems we try to solve the problem and yeah we actually have can get better segmentation accuracy so that is it we show some distribution some clusterings and show some of the applications so if anyone is interested can read the literature. Thank you. Uh, any questions?